for a car to be deemed the people's car, it has to tick off many specific things off the box. I mean, you have the likes of the Ford Model T, the VW Beetle, and this, the Peugeot 504. Now, if you're going to be talking about such a family favorite vehicle, such as this one, where our parents have very fond memories of themselves frolicking in the back seats, it's only right that we pronounce this car properly. Okay. Peugeot. Peugeot. Got it. So, in this episode, we want to find out if the trusty, reliable, and overly familiar Honda Fit Hybrid is worthy to be in such great company. Is it really the Zimbabwean people's car? Brought to you by CarCrazy.Africa. News, reviews, and automotive classifieds. A special thanks to One Smart Auto Trader for providing us today's vehicle. You can find them on Facebook, links in the description below, or near the Bordeaux Racecourse. So we're inside the Honda Fit, also known as the Jazz hybrid version. And look, the inside, to be honest, even though it's a car that was made for, you know, your budgeting in terms of fuel and probably getting a reasonably priced car, I have to say, in comparison to its closest competitor in Zim currently, the Toyota Aqua, I have to say the interior is actually quite impressive, especially in this trim that we got here. We got the one with uh, leather seats. It's one of the options. Another option is a panoramic roof, but this one does not have the panoramic roof. We got leather stitched steering wheel with uh, cruise control. Uh, we've got uh, a nice nifty little infotainment system here. I like the asymmetrical look of it. It's kind of like, it's, it's, it's a bit reminiscent of the Aqua interior wise, uh, but this one is a bit more intuitive. I think the buttons are a bit more easier to use. And it's also very familiar if you've been in the previous generation Honda Fit. Uh, now this, because it's a hybrid, every time you switch it on, your information cluster is lit up in a rather engaging, calm feeling blue light which can be changed when you press this little button over here when you press the econ mode it turns green there's also a uh, traction control you can uh, rear wiper this car has heated seats which has uh, which is quite impressive in comparison to the aqua why do i keep talking about the aqua here you ask because we did the aqua and i thought it was only fair that we compare the two Maybe we'll have a show whereby we have both of them next to each other and have a drag race. Give us a comment if you'd like to see that. But uh, while we're still on the interior, very spacious. You got your manual handbrake, uh, folding windows, folding windows, folding rear view mirrors, <laughs> electric and uh, the jazz. You got a lot of storage space. Uh, I mean, you got so much storage space in this thing. I mean, basically, if you've been in a fit before, let's not act like you don't know what a fit looks like. But this one is just a little bit more new, more trendy, more tech savvy, if I may say. It's a beautiful little thing. Now, let's, let's move into the back. So we're now in the back of the Honda Fit Hybrid. And today I'm the backseat guy. 
uh, usually we have this uh, long ago person who can see into the future sitting in the back but today we decided to have somebody who's a bit more average uh, and as you can see I got a lot of leg room I got a it's quite comfortable well in this one in particular like I mentioned before we got the we got the leather seats with a bit of cloth in the middle uh, unfortunately no heated seats at the back here and guess what in the back of the hybrid Honda Fit we got electric windows. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, Toyota Aqua. Anyway, uh, another thing that this car is very impressive for is the space and the way they did their magic seats. Because these seats can be folded in so many ways just in case maybe you're carrying a bike or, you know, compost for your garden or uh, 15 people. <clears throat> you can fold the seats which is quite impressive and um let's move to the boot so let's look at the boots shall we as you can see we've got quite a bit of boot space here this is about 300 liters so it's about 35 liters less than the ICE version of the Honda Fit. This is simply because of the battery pack that's like under the floor. So there's no uh, fake floor here or any storage underneath because it's just batteries there. So the boot space as it is right now, like I said, it's about 300 liters. But when you fold the seats, gives you about 883 liters of space now i know we didn't have tino do the boot thing today but uh, we knew he was going to fit because after all it's a fit So, um, we are inside the Honda Fit Hybrid, so I want to see how it drives. Uh, this is not our first time inside the Honda Fit. Uh, if you're fans of the channel, you might know that uh, we already did the first generation Honda Fit. Uh, link in the description below. So, is it any different, Ryan, from the first gen that you drove? The difference is uh, planets apart. What? No, it can't be that different. It is it can't be that quite different. different. Uh, simply because I guess it uh, does. that um, that first generation Honda was not a hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an ICE. Uh, this is a hybrid, so you get that immediate response and also that CVT transmission. And this one doesn't have that uh, rubber band effect uh, that you feel in the Toyota Aqua. But there is a huge difference between. Let me just put my seatbelt on. Yeah, safety first. Safety first. Kids, man. remember, safety first. Yeah. yeah. So there's a huge difference uh, in terms of response on the acceleration uh, between this and the and the old and the old one. Fit. Yeah, because this is a hybrid. Remember, so it's it's not only getting its power from the engine; it's getting it from the electric motor as well. Yeah. Oh, it makes sense, makes sense, because it doesn't have a large um, horsepower number, but weirdly enough, when you compare it to the Aqua we reviewed a few weeks ago, yes. this seems like it has more power. It has quite a bit more power, mm. uh, especially based on the throttle response, like I said before. And yeah. also, I'm picking up that this one, uh, the steering wheel uh, is a bit more... Uh, 
assertive than the aqua not not by that much mm -hmm. but the response in terms of like when you floor it yeah there's definitely more response or faster response than in the toyota aqua yeah i think even as a passenger you can feel that too and i think i agree with you on that one too um the one thing that remains constant which is normal for this sort of um shall we say budget vehicle super is, mini <laughs> is um the right quality it's still harsh um, i mean listen feel this Ooh, yeah oh my god yeah, ah, yeah you not. really feel it through the seat the seats are not as comfortable as you'd like but, but they are more comfortable than the aqua yes and more especially comfortable in this trip yeah 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 because this is leather seats man i mean Heated seats, man. I mean, my tush is That was the right first now. thing I noticed when I hopped in. I was like, I was wait. I actually quite impressed. It comes seats. with heated and cool seats. That's, that's weird. But yeah, the buttons are here below. And uh, you can do that if you want. So that's pretty neat. So this is the 2013 model. So that also came with a few other extras apart from the heated and cool seats. You also have um, cruise control. Woo! <laughs> oh yeah, you got cruise control as well. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, it really helps especially if you just want to cruise around yep and if you want to add more people in the back you can i mean we know what this car is used for right let's let's not let's be honest let's, it can got, be used as a taxi yeah. it can be used as a bedroom <laughs> so it's a family show sorry but uh it, it's <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's very cute but don't get fooled because it's a uh, it's quite a what's Kudzi's favorite word? Utilitarian <laughs> type so vehicle, and you um, can fit a lot of people. Pun intended. <laughs> you can fit a lot of people in it, for real, for real. Yeah. And um, I like the color schemes that they have on offer. There's the almond green. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the white one. So yeah. the white with the white lights at the back kind of looks like a senior nurse from <laughs> Parreñatwa. But it's a, it's a nice look. Um, do I prefer it over the almond green or the blues? I think I prefer the blue one and then followed by the white. Okay. But I like the color schemes overall because I think the white lights at the back, they give it a little bit more character in comparison to the ICE counterparts where the, where the lights are just red. Yeah, I think they did that on purpose so that Obviously. you can distinguish which one is the hybrid and which one is the non-hybrid. So that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, so the question now is, should you buy one? I mean, you're looking at about 28 kilometers per liter. Yeah, that, that's tempting right there. That's, I mean, that's, that's a very serious fuel economy. Now, for the people that get a bit uh, worried about hybrid technology, you guys need to know that this particular Honda Fit was started in like 2011. And Honda had started research on uh, hybrid technology like 20 years prior to that. So we're working with technology that's uh, about... 30 years uh, in uh, in the making in the making mm -hmm. so you're not this is not new technology so that should take away a bit of uh, fear that people have when it comes to buying hybrids because a lot of people are scared that okay when I'm servicing the car am I servicing the electric motor or am I certain and, and and the engine at the same time no it's it's pretty much the electric motor pretty much takes care of itself most of the time yeah obviously after a few k's like we're talking like hundreds of thousands of kilometers is when maybe you will need to replace the battery pack yeah that's and, true. and stuff like that yeah but in the meantime all you have to do is make sure that your batteries are well ventilated that's pretty much what you need to do to make sure that you get the best out of a Honda Fit Hybrid. Okay, I think the best way to describe someone who would be interested in this car is, um, you remember that quote from Vin Diesel saying that, um, we're family. No, <laughs> I live my life a quarter mile at a time. So yeah. this car is like, um, I live my life five liters at a time because <laughs> you're spending five liters at a time. Go anywhere, wherever you need to go. Five liters is more than a hundred kilometers. But, yeah. but also you, you have to understand that uh, when we say 28 liters, uh per 28 k's per liter we're talking about city driving because yeah. uh when you're driving in the city uh and you're below 60 kilometers per hour yeah you're using the electric motor you're not using your, your engine your engine and the engine has this start stop technology where every time you pull up by a robot the engine switches off 
but every time you go over 60 k's it's the engine that's chowing the fuel and if the engine is working it's pretty much uh, uh an ordinary vehicle because this is a 1.3 mm -hmm. uh, 1.3 liter uh engine from honda so if you're going to be driving on the highway a lot of the time yeah you'll pretty much find that this consumes the same amount of fuel as any other honda fit oh so so can i, I cannot visit my two girlfriends that live on either side of the country on a single tank of fuel uh, no you cannot <laughs> but i can come close you can, of course, you can come close if most of your driving is city driving. <laughs> but they live on either side. One yeah, is in so Vipos, that means, one is in Mutare. So, so that means you're pretty much using your engine pretty much most of yeah. the time, which, <laughs> which means that it's pretty much uh, the same as any other car if you're going to be on the highway mm, okay. all the time. Cool. So, to be honest, at the price at which these cars are going for, which is about 6.5 to 7K, is it worth the buy? I think it is. I think it is worth the buy, uh, especially with the cost of fuel these days. Yeah. But you need to know why you're buying it. Exactly. If you're if you're like one of those people that are always stuck in traffic, pretty much at peak hour, because that's pretty much every person with a nine to five. You're gonna be stuck in traffic in the morning. You're gonna be stuck in traffic uh, in the evening. Especially if you're one of those people that wake up at half seven. You're like, oh my goodness, I gotta get to work. <laughs> when everybody else is on the road, you're gonna you're yeah. gonna be stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. This is where you need a car like this, because you're pretty much using your electric motor when you're stuck in traffic uh not not if you're one of those people that are driving on highways okay. most of the time because if you're driving on highways most of the time well then you can buy this for the comfort because i think it offers a bit more comfort than its uh, petrol counterpart but uh if you're a city to city driver city link kind of like person mm. then this car is for you all right mm. Yes! yes! Please, please like and subscribe. I thank you. Oh, you have a little dignity, dude. What the? Sheesh. We're recording. You do realize, right? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Ah. The bold statement came from Kuti. <laughs>